Welcome back to What RT Noobs for General Disturbance. This is a 105 LFH 18B2, the French Tier 5 Premium SPG, otherwise known as a Leffy, a Leaf Blower, or a Lofa Fafa if you happen to be Jingles. Well, this one is located on the north spawn of Malinovka, and it's under the command of Steel Mike. Okay, well, not moving. I think Mike's still loading in. His gun's dropped and he's not mo moving anywhere. Just wait a second or two. He will come to life. This is an encounter battle, by the way. And, well, he's still not moving. Wake up, Mike! Well, his team are moving quite a lot. <laughs> We're 30 seconds into the battle and Mike's still not moved. I promise you, he does move in this video. He really does. This is not what you want <laughs> to be uh, loading into the game. And I rather suspect he hasn't loaded into the game because the gun dropped. Obviously, that means it's not under his control. If he was actually in the game and just... Oh, now his gun's moving. Ah, now he's in the game. You know, I was saying, if the, if the thing doesn't move at all, then there's a good probability that uh, he wasn't in the game or not distracted by something. And, uh, well, he's working out where to put the shell on that super, um, Sherman Jumbo. Fires around at the engine bay. Direct hit for 115. Now, as you may know by now, it's the 105mm light field howitzer. <laughs> he just took out the M42-57. He was aiming for the Sherman. He actually took out the other enemy medium. And he fires another one at Sherman. And this time he hits him for 198. Well, these shells will do 410 outfit if they can penetrate the armor of the target. And he just whacked the, t the wreck of that M4257. And he's now aiming for the KB-2 or the Sherman Jumbo. And they didn't pull back as he expected them to. But... Any second now, he's going to fire again. They're lined up, rounds out, and hits the j jumbo. I think he would prefer to hit the KV-2, actually. Rounds out. Long flight time for the shell. 131 hit points off that one. It's actually firing from the other side of the battle, and this is an encounter battle. It's right over the top of the... from one side to the other. It's about a two, three second delay. About two and a half seconds. Going for a Largo. Rounds out. Oh, wipeout! That's a one shot kill, and I suspect that actually penetrated his armor. Goes for the KV2 again. And oh, that was a bad one because it wasn't fully dialed in when he shot. You really do need to dial in on this RT because if you want to get an effective shot, you need to shoot accurately. And it's difficult to get accurate shots when the enemy is moving all the time at the other end of the battlefield. Because you've got to work in a three, two to three second delay in the shell arriving at the spot. So you need to aim at a spot where you know the enemy will be. He's fired at the KV-2. The KV-2 stopped, but he took the shell anyway and he's out the battle. So that's three kills that are... That our steel Mike managed to make so far in this game. And now we've got a Panzer 4H on the ramp. Now, it's incredibly difficult to hit tanks on that ramp, especially when you're rather close to it. And he is too close at the moment. In order to hit a tank on that ramp, he needs to pull back a bit further. The further away, the better. Because what you want to do is you want to arc the shell over down the um, uh, over the uh, the ridge line down the ramp into the target and it's very difficult to get the precision that gives you a direct hit oh and the Panzer 4H has come out and he's headed this way excellent leading shot there on the target and he has been spotted so he needs to get this shot in kill the target and move and he gets the kill and he needs to move quick to get out of the way of the enemy fire. The enemy does have two RTs. They have a Fifi. And they also has a 
Panzer Sebsfalefetta VFB, which is otherwise known as a grasshopper. Oh, you know, he knocked a tree down there, but that actually might tell the enemy where he was. You don't want to leave a trail of broken down trees because that might make the enemy think, ah, I know where you're going. So he's going up the hill now. Still wants to get that jumbo. And a Lux has turned up as well. Now the jumbo should be easier to get shots on because he's gradually approaching, trying to get a ridgeline shot at the enemy. And just landed in front of him, but 57 hit points from the splash. Trying to get another one in. He, he stopped momentarily, and unfortunately that shell's wasted, but he still has 24 rounds. I think he's there. Yep, he hasn't moved. And another big hit, 140, potential high caliber, and the kill goes to the 105 AM, the AMX 105 AM. Yes, there's two French RT on this team, and there's only one French and one German RT on the enemy team. Well, they're one tank ahead of the enemy, but it's so early in this game that that really doesn't mean anything, other than the fact, of course, that we've got forces down covering the field and the enemy well they don't so that means that they are going to be at a bit of disadvantage if they try to cap they've got to invade our territory in order to work uh, cap out and well that won't be easy kv1s direct hit we can't see him but the shell disappeared without an explosion so we know that was a hit fires another one in Hits the rock face. RNG says, no, that one's not going to hit. RNG can be very fickle sometimes. Well, that Panzer T-25 has received so much damage that he's got to pull away. Okay, the KV-1S is still going up the hill. Unfortunately, our BDR is very badly damaged, so he needs the help of RT. Rounds out. Direct hit, 126. Now, Artie's going to be the big leveler in this game because he can easily take out that KV-1S, even though the BDR might not be able to. And there goes the BDR. Oh, Largo just took damage from the enemy Artie as well. But <laughs> Steel Mike managed to put a round into the KV-1S again. Tracked him. Dialing in again. Rounds out. Going for the engine bay. Just misses him. Okay, he's probably moved from that position, but he fires another round in anyway, and he has gone. We've got only one guy up on top of the hill now. Only one. We need him to spot to tell us where he is, and still Mike's put that in chat. That's one of the big faults of a lot of tank drivers. They fail to spot, which means RT is no longer playing in the battle, or no longer able to get shots on the enemy, because he doesn't know where the enemy are. Okay, KV-1S, he's been spotted. Panzer 3J spotted and for us, and we get a hit. 151, the Panzer 3J picks up the assistance points. Still going after the target. We've lost sight of him. Fires a blind shot in, but doesn't hit. He can't afford to waste too many shots on blind shots now. Fires another one in, should be good. It is, 99. One more shot like that, and the KV-1S is toast. Looks good. He gets him! Yep, he got him. That was enough. Unfortunately, we're now one tank down on the enemy. And over on the other side of the battlefield, well, we can see two tanks together. They're an AT-2. And that T-80 who just got killed. We're dialing in on the AT-2. Rounds out. Long range shot. Direct hit. Wipes him out. It must have hit the engine bay. And penetrated. And that's a top gun. Unfortunately, we just lost our M4A1 as well. So the score now is 10-10. Five left on each team. Both teams still has their RTs. Well, Steel Mike's gone in amongst the trees. And he's been asked to platoon with one of, the, uh, one of the dead teammates. Not so sure he'll do that because it's still possible for him to actually earn a BIA out of this battle if one of his teammates actually manages to get enough kills. 
I know some players think, well, I can complete a mission if you're platoon with me. Um, yes, that may be a case, but sometimes it's not advantageous to platoon with somebody who cannot earn any more kills. Well, that blind shot didn't do the trick. Ah, now, okay. The uh, He is actually going further up the hill, which is not a good idea if he wants to get hits on that SU-85B. Because it actually means the rock will be more and more in the way. But if he can get to the very top of the hill, then the enemy should be equidistant to where he was before. It's very slow to RT this one. Based on the Char B1 hull, it's basically a heavy tank in disguise. Wargaming were initially very reluctant to bring it back into sale on both the servers, on the American one and the European one, but after they realised how much money they could make from this thing, they, they put it back on sale several times. And of course even included it in the loot boxes at Christmas. Not this Christmas, the one before. And unfortunately we just lost the Panzer 3J as well. So now, four versus five, and the SU-85, well, he's moving from his position. He just moved. Lost sight of where he was, though, and it's... Well, with only ten rounds left, Steel Mike's doing the right thing. Don't fire at targets when you're guessing where the enemy is. Only fire at targets where you know the enemy is. Wait until you spot them, then shoot them. We did have a player in What's RT Noobs who fired off all his rounds at the enemy, ran out of shells and then had to rely on his teammates to kill all the rest of the enemy. Well, there was only one enemy left at the end of that game. But it could so easily have been a battle where if he'd kept hold of one of his rounds, he might have been able to win the game. And he was spotted there, but he's found the Hellcat. Oh, good shot on the Hellcat, but the enemy Fifi found out where he was. <coughs> and he's trying to get him. In fact, both RT are trying to get him. Oh. The enemy Fifi managed to find him, but the Hellcat was taken out of the game. So, yeah, he did say, worth the risk. It certainly was for that shot in the Hellcat alone, because it took out one of the most deadly members of the enemy team. All they've got left now is an M3 Lee. An SU-85 and, of course, both our team. Whereas our team have got the Panzer 38 NA, a light tank, who's easy to run around and quickly spot the enemy. A Nashorn, which is a German tank destroyer, tier 6, with a very effective gun. In fact, if he's got the top gun, I think it's the 88mm gun, which is will do a huge amount of damage. And lastly, of course, that AMX 105 AM, which is not the easiest RT to play with, it's a tier 4 RT, but it's still capable with a 105mm gun with a fairly fast fire rate. And the Panzer 38 NAs decided to get into the cap quickly and force the enemy to come and kill him, whilst the Nashorn is watching over the cap from the hill. Now, it's a pity we haven't actually switched over to the Nashorn, because it would be quite interesting. But, oh, the Panzer 38 NA pulled out of the cap. That may be because he actually took some damage, but we can't see from here to see if that was the case. Ah, he's found one of them. It's the M3 Lee, and I don't think the Nashorn can see him, but the Panzer 38 NA can definitely see him. And the Panzer 38 NA, if he's got the 5cm gun, should be able to kill the M3 Lee fairly easily. It's outside our render range, so we can't see anything. The M3 leads getting close to the cap. And that's going to put him in range of the Nashorn. And the Nashorn nails him. 
And now it's three versus three, but there's only 30 seconds left on the clock. So it looks like it's going to be a draw because they can't cap in time. No way now. Even with three in the cap, they would need at least, was it three divided by one, 40. Um, it's at least 40 seconds, 45 seconds, if I remember correctly. There's the SU-85. He went over the top. He's found the Nashorn. They're exchanging fire. But this game's going to be over in the next three seconds. And that Nashorn does have the 88mm gun. And it's a draw. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. Well, it was an ace tank of a steel mic in the 105 FH 18B2. Fifi La Pew Pew. He also managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 17. He got a gauze medal for doing more damage than 10 times the hit points of his own vehicle. A high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And he also got a top gun for getting at least six kills. So a pretty brilliant game for Steel Mike, even though it was a draw. <coughs> his win eight from the game was 10,261. He got the highest damage in the game, 2,761 hit points. Next highest scorer was that SU-85B with 1,119. And when it came to kills, he got the highest number again, six kills. Highest number on the enemy team, three kills, including the person who actually killed him in the end, which was their enemy, Fifi. And uh, also the Hellcat, who got three kills, but um, was taken, a, well, badly damaged by Steel Mike. And when it came to base XP, yes, he's got the top in that one as well. So he's got the top in all three columns, 688 base experience points. And the next high scorer was the SU-85B with 446 and their Panzer IV with 421. He fired 33 rounds, got 18 direct hits, 4 penetrations, 19 splash. Damage of 2,761 hit points of damage, of which 2,630 were at more than 300 meters. He did receive two hits, I'm afraid, yep. Um, both of those hits came from the RT, uh, from the Fifi, actually, the, the ones that actually penetrated him. He got splashed by the um, enemy crit, uh, grasshopper, and that's why it's showing three by way of splash damage. Eight enemy vehicles damaged, six killed, and 13 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, he earned 49,280 credits, got 6,075 for courageous resistance. That's for getting a battle hero medal or an epic medal in a game that was a loss or a draw, and this was a draw. Total 55,355 credits, and after repair and ammunition resupply, he took away 49,917 credits. Picked up five bombs for the awards. And 1,032 XP, 583 for Courageous Resistance, 646 for this being a premium vehicle, took away 2,261 altogether. So, sad that it was a draw. I think actually that really there was a sort of like long period where it was difficult to actually get any shots on the enemy because they were dug in like, you know, fleas on a, um, or uh, fleas on a dog or <laughs> was it ticks on a hound. Uh, yes, very difficult to actually get um, shots on the enemy when they've dug themselves in. And in fact, actually, towards the end of the game, the SU-85 is the only one who's actually trying, I think, to try and uh, dig, uh, find out where the his opposite numbers were. That M3 made a huge mistake being dragged near to the cap, or at least going to the cap, because he must have realised the Nashorn would be covering it. And the moment he appeared there, he was gone. So, um, yeah, it's unfortunate it ended up a draw, but it's amazing that he might manage to make an ace tanker out of a drawn game. Normally, you have to get a win game in order to get uh, to um, a benefit from an ace, uh, but this was tier six games, so he did very well to get an ace in a draw. So, very well done indeed. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel, and thank you for watching.